Yeah, it appears to be live-ish. Make sure we have tolerable sound. Back to the old mic, the other mic, if it works. Yeah, it appears to be live-ish. All right, so it looks like it's working. So, uh, Oakley Duke. Um, so where to go? Uh, it's all right. Uh, Hothliday has brought up a couple of points, and I've already sort of addressed one of them in one of the lecture videos, but I'll restate it um, and play his remarks. But first, I think I will deal with uh, comments that were also left by other people. <clears throat> All right. Should be able to see those. I guess I should check. Uh, well, a little bit cut off, but who cares? Close enough. Um, so, whoa. Didn't want to do that. Whatever the hell happened there. I didn't click nothing. Whatever credits are, apparently I don't have any of those. Thankfully, <laughs> yes. All right, magnetism is more, magnetism is more complicated, but here's an electron and proton. Okay, so this is guy did a, a simulation video, and it's really not very good. Uh, I mean, it's very nice. I like it. Uh, music and all that crap. Um, got lots of background stuff going on. Very good. But it really doesn't illustrate anything I'm talking about in the sense that obviously I don't think protons and electrons would be doing this slow motion thing. And I don't think they would. I, I look, I mean, they're attracted over very long distances. Uh, they're, they're obviously creating opposite pressure. I mean, you just don't. It's not really my theory. So I'm just saying we have to do a little better than this. So I have to explain it for you. Maybe I'll make you a video. Just explain the basic rules. And then you can make those mathematical and then make a simulation that's more realistic because this isn't anything. I, ca I, can't, I can't find any resemblance to what I'm arguing for, but I appreciate the effort. It just has to be done better because it isn't anything, like I said, I can't see any resemblance to my theory in it. Um, uh, then John Gray points out a few strange videos. I, I really, you know, I, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but. I'm here to do one thing, to point out how conventional physics is full of shit and to defend my theory as a replacement for that full of shit theory. I'm really not here to debunk every little crazy bullshit claim made by every crazy loop-de-doo out there. So he sits there and says uh, a short moment at the beginning about speed cameras. And then we go video of traveling light. Same difference. Um, and... Uh, video called the ether why the hell would I be interested in ether videos <laughs> why do you think I care whereas uh, there's no conventional physics that believes in an ether I mean ether is a, st a stupid redundant moron idea it's not any better to me than bent space or creating stupid uh, time dimensions it's superfluous nonsense ether um, and you what you, you want me to I have to waste my time debunking ether theory um, and he puts a thing to his sight, like somehow I could care about this stupid idiot who thinks there's ether. I, I, I just, you're just not getting the program here at all. So anyway, and, and this stupid video of the traveling light thing, it's, it's a contrived, it's, a, it's not a real photograph of anything. They take one billion st photographs, okay, of, of something and create a composite image. So what? And what, what, where, where, anywhere in it, is it at all in conflict with everything I'm saying light is? It doesn't in any way dispute anything I'm saying. So why should I care about this little gimmick, this toy? And so you're just not getting the program here. I'm totally uninterested in little gimmicks. Uh, you know, I'm talking about the foundations of physics, whether there's wave or particle. Um, whether it's a push or a pull universe, all that kind of stuff. Those are the subjects I'm interested in, not this mush. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so back to Hothliday's video, which is reasonably polite, but it still has some kind of little snarkyisms in it. It's a very poor quality video, which has sort of become Hothliday's uh, thing. <clears throat> you know, it's made crappy videos. What the hell did I do with my smoking stick? Hmm. 
misplaced it somewhere. Aha! Uh -huh. I thought I'd do a quick question video on job science. It didn't do me to do an update video. Get round to that soonish. Complicated adventures in my life, legal adventures to the undertaking. Yeah, it's legal stuff is fun. That's another thing I became an expert at, you know, besides learning physics over the last 12 years, I learned a lot about the law, so, uh, but it's American law. Um, okay, so it, it struck my interest uh, in Mendon's um, reviewing of Walter Lewin's post material uh, online. And it strikes some fundamental questions uh, in, in contrast to graph sciences theories, um, mainly around the notion of of trying to ignore or um, state, take the position that, that there is no such thing as. Um, electric force what i'm saying is there's one force there's not a separate magnetic force and then a separate electrical force the two forces are made of one thing one substance this black and red uh energy this positive and negative energy field that is essentially gravity except in the case of gravity it's randomized and so it doesn't have any polarity and therefore can't create any nuanced effects but in the case of charging things, pressurizing atoms, it matters. The black force will pressurize uh, the electrons. The red force will relax the electrons. Um, and so it matters. And in the process of relaxing and compressing, charged atoms are created. And when their charged atoms are next to each other, they become a dipole. And when they become a dipole, they become a magnet and all that kind of stuff. So um, there's just one force causing the, the effect, is my point. Electricity is different than magnetism. Pressure moving is different than what you're radiating because of your pressure. But they're intimately connected in the sense that it is the size, the pressure of the atom that decides whether it's positive ion or negative ion its character its magnetic character is dictated by its electrical character but there's only one force conveying the information there isn't an electric force and then a magnetic force they're not two separate forces that's my contention it's just magnetism and that's all um, that needs to be concerned with you could say there's only charge, and when you create a charged dipole, you have a magnet. When you have charged monopoles, again, they're, just, they're like having the north and the south end of a magnet free that you can move around. And they obey different rules, subtly different. See, you have this rather good um, plastic. Spoon, which is, is good for electrical charging. Um, I was going to make an elaborate, you know, higher quality. This is for quality and uh, laptop video also. But so he's going to make a high quality, but he ends up doing this. Fine, fine, fine. Yes, I already get the idea. Yes, you can charge. We already see saw this. We can charge things, positive or negative, and then we can touch other things and convey the charge. Lots of things we can do. This. All right, picking up pieces of paper requires you to induce a charge. So you've got to be careful that you don't touch your hand with the plastic because when you do that, you discharge it. So you have to hold it above the paper if you have any hope of picking up the paper. But I can charge this up by rubber legs. and I can deflect water. I can pick up pieces of tissue paper. You can do those with a magnet also. I'm just going to say you can't, but I'm just going to say, yeah, you can. 
and you see all the demonstrations that Walt the Moon can do. Now, the magnet won't pick up tissue. Uh, the magnet won't pick up tissue. Yes, it will if you pre-charge the tissue. The magnet won't induce, it doesn't induce enough current voltage, okay? Magnets create very low voltage because magnets are molecules that are dipoles, whole molecules. So their charge density is very low because it's just a little bit of charge across a big molecule. So it's a bunch of dipole molecules. So we have to sort of get into chemistry. This is why only certain things can be magnets, is because you have to charge the whole molecule. You know, molecule, big things. So the big things are the dipole. The individual atoms that make up the big molecule or compound, however you want to describe it, um, they all don't get pressurized. The overall molecule has an imbalance in it. It has it has an atom that's pressurized on one end, and it has an atom that's low pressure on the other end. The rest of the atoms are not pressurized. Magnet won't deflect water. Okay, it will deflect water. So go ahead and do the experiment, and you'll see it will. It will attract, and it will repel water. You have to be close. You have to get closer. But it does it, clearly. I've done it. It does it. Um, and so again, you guys have to understand the chain, the different, the biggest difference is, right, okay, is you, you just go with the idea that how this, this effect moves through space. So the electrical component, that is the pressurization of the atoms, goes at the R rule. The charged monopoles is R squared in terms of its de depth, and the depth of the magnet is the worst at r cubed so it's the it has the weakest uh difference so so and it makes a huge difference right the difference is going from like four to eight to um 16 no four eight 12 16 and having numbers like four thirty two 96 or something like that so it's a huge difference in terms of how much faster magnetism degrades the dipole degrades because the dipole again has both charges close so it's polluting the effect so get a strong neodymium, use either the south pole or the north pole, don't use the side of the magnet, obviously, and you'll see it'll move the water. So go ahead and do it and you'll see it. I mean, make it a drip or a little stream. It can't be a harsh water, but it's it'll move the water. Medium, medium, uh, magnets. In the demonstrations of Walter Lewin, um, As I've pointed out, the demonstrations, some of these are old demonstrations that they've engineered over a great deal of time to illustrate one effect. And some of them, in my opinion, are just overt deceptions because of how they've contrived the experiment, like the radar experiment. And these other ones have huge, again, the fluorescent bulb lighting up. What's not pointed out is that the atmosphere is a conductor. He demonstrates that that he, with his equipment, not only can he do, he say charge something like this negatively and show it to negative charge, he can actually charge it positively and and, and do experiments and say ah it's positive. Nothing miraculous about that. Nothing that demonstrates any how, how I'm wrong. Where, where does my theory say you can't charge something positive or charge it negative? Nowhere does my theory say you can't do that, especially with metals. You can do anything. All you do is make contact, and it'll automatically pick up the charge. So, so I can't do that with magnets. Why is that? Why is <clears throat> magnetic? No, well, the reason why is because they're molecular magnets. 
the molecules are dictating. So it's almost the same argument I could make about why insulators are insulators. Some of these are chemistry arguments. I mean, you have to recognize that the substance is built different. The matrix of the atoms is different. So in insulators, I would argue, it's <clears throat> the, the, the atoms themselves are in arrangements to, to make the molecules. Molecules have shapes. That's why diamonds are like, it's all carbon, right? Graphite and, 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 and soot and diamonds are all the same element. And clearly it's the shape of the molecule that makes all the difference. Well, some shaped molecules will be able to become magnetized and some shaped molecules will not. Some will be able to be pressurized, that is made uh, uh, electric, to have electric potential and some will not. So my argument would be is like something like an insulator like glass, what's happening is, is the atoms are as the, as the electric field moves through the material, it is charging it in a sense. It's trying to make it, it's trying to pressurize the atoms, but because of the way the atoms are bound, they can't expand. They can't get bigger and they can't get smaller. It, the, the geometry won't allow it. Okay, the geometry is specific and it can't go bigger and it can't go smaller. So that pressure is pushed to the outside where the outside atoms, okay, which are like on the, uh, the molecule has atoms. You can sort of see that when on the outside, those atoms aren't going to be connected to each other. The, the outside atoms aren't connected to another molecule. So they can pressurize, but the ones inside can't because they're part of the matrix, the grid work that's very rigid. That's why glass shatters is because it's such a rigid, form. It will not allow any expansion. It won't allow any contraction where the metals are soft by comparison. They're not brittle. So they will accept um, being screwed with, uh, expanding and contracting. It's all the same. Why doesn't the magnet uh, reflect water, pick up tissue? It does. It does deflect water and it will pick up charged tissue. It won't it can't it can't induce a charge in tissue because its field is not dense enough essentially what we're saying is, is, is the electric force affects everything. <laughs> affects everything well it doesn't affect everything and it affects everything differently it depends on the substance so you know they're just plain wrong statement um and you have to understand the difference between atoms being pressurized <laughs> and causing, uh, you know, dipoles, atomic dipoles, and molecules, much bigger things, being polarized and creating a dipole, and then whole substances being polarized and creating a dipole. And so, there, you know, it's not as simple as just saying um, the effect is only realized in singular atoms or something. It's obviously not just singular atoms, it's molecules also, and it's people, whole things can be charged where there are dipole. One end is positive, one end is negative. You make it wide enough to push it around properly. Attract everything but magnetism. Right. Magnetism, okay, the dipole, okay, again, in R squared, R cubed rule versus R squared rule versus R rule. That's pretty much the difference. Clearly, most of the charge things you're using are have big surfaces, big exposure. Most of the magnets you're going to be using has very small exposure. Another factor. So, another question is Walter Lewin in the most recent video, lecture three or two, maybe, but he actually mathematically predicts that the I, I love these you know the math predicts no the math was written to describe so let's again understand the math was written to describe the effects it's not predicting anything there's more crap language in my opinion I need that that um, a large surface can exhibit almost uh, constant electric charge 
showing you that then yeah yeah so i did already explain this but i'll explain it again it's clear yes uh, 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 an infinite plane creates the same um, there's no r rule anymore so an infinite plane means you'll have feel if i turn on the a bunch of leds and i have them on a gigantic wall okay and you're standing five feet away or ten feet away you'll feel exactly the same amount of energy coming off that you'll see as much light so if you have a big enough surface where you're not missing enough of the angles so you're getting almost every angle possible can hit you then you have essentially made it impossible for you to miss any light because for every bit for every step you make backwards you expose yourself to more sources so even though you're losing the light going this way from some of the LEDs the ones in front of you are you're missing this light because you're moving away as you're moving away you're exposed to this light so for every bit you lose this way you gain something going this way and that's how an infinite plane would work but they're not putting two infinite planes next to each other. So anyway, let's finish this point. Angle of deflection is some degree of accuracy. So he says there was mathematical proof of this, and it wasn't a mathematical proof because the math didn't have anything to do with the second charge. Didn't describe its shape, didn't describe its its surface area, didn't describe a single thing about it. Created an artificial fake. Look, we have a charge that has no, we gave it no density. We gave it no surface area. We gave it no identity. We just use it as a test charge. Well, of course, a test charge can't change anything because it's not going to reflect any light back. But clearly, if I took an infinite plane with LEDs and then I stuck a mirror, an infinite mirror on the other side, you'd sure as hell know there's an awful lot of light bouncing back and forth, wouldn't you? You say, where can the light possibly go? How does it escape? Oh, it can't escape. So the more LED light you push, the more, and it would get burning hot in there in no time. It would be the perfect way to make an oven. Okay, it would just get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. Because every photon stays in there, theoretically. Uh, and and what's all the idea the bigger the plate, the, the more the experiment would be successful in demonstrating this, this almost constant feature. Right. So again, if you just if you just made the balloon, so they used a little round balloon and an infinite plane. My argument is is the force is going to reflect off the balloon. So if the balloon was flat, then you'd have a lot of reflections, and so then you would see that the closer you come, the more deflection you get because there's going to be more pressure because you're going to have back and forth things happening obviously as the thing starts to turn at an angle the reflections aren't going to be back and forth so the other catch to it is, is you have to sort of weight the, the the surface so it stays parallel so you have to put it on some system where it goes this way and it stays parallel and you'll get the effect and he'll he, again the experiments are going to be showing exactly my point in the future he's going to have experiments with charged plates and he's going to take two charged plates that are this far apart and he's going to push them together and double their voltage just proving my point so um the the, the his experiment was deceptive because he used a round object which doesn't reflect back in your parallel it reflects in directions where there can't be any constant reflection and if you just had used a flat surface you would have seen that the flat surface will bend more the closer you get. The closer you are, it's going to be more pressure. And so it, my point is perfectly validated by real experiments. And there was nothing in the math that proved anything because the math didn't even have the surface of the other body. It was irrelevant. It wasn't even considered. Again, to some accuracy with some assumptions. Now, that is contrary so he derives the mathematics he does the demonstration that seems contrary. so again he derived mathematics that has no variables in there that could pick up or notice the effect you can't have reflections if you have no profile he gave the test charge no area it had no it wasn't an infinite plane it was a nothing plane it had no surface. 
contrary to the prediction of the rap science uh, idea of my prediction is the true one it comes out in the evidence it comes out in the experiment just do the experiment the right way and you'll see it in the future the experiment will be done two plates equal flat plates will be parallel to each other and pushed together and the force will be doubled the, in, the increasing um but the te table tennis ball speak so does that <laughs> um yeah so so why can why can i make positive things why can i make negative things show it because it's in force but i can't do that with magnets magnets are always dipoles that's a limitation to their ability to do stuff not an asset and it's only an asset when you're able to put two magnets because then you're 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 maximizing their repulsion or maximizing their attraction because you have the opposite effect happening on both sides so that's their only advantage but the dipoles are intrinsically less powerful fundamentally less powerful it would be much better if you could make a solid metal permanent monopole of positive and negative but that requires them to be molecular and molecules don't do that i know you i think you sometimes try to explain it but it's still out there as an almost satisfactory explanation well contrasting why i mean if i if, if i charge this negatively and break it they both remain negatively charged. Uh, if, if I break a magnet. Have you tried that? I'm just curious because, frankly, I'm not sure it will. The breaking process is where you're going to perhaps create. Um, well, to break it, you know, you know, you have to ground it, and you know, so you have to do it through some insulating process of breaking. But yeah, it still has to do with the fact that it's not a dipole. So yes, you break something that's not a dipole. Yes, it's still just another piece of itself. So yes, I don't think there's anything in conflict with my theory. I'm not saying something that's not a dipole can be broken into two charges. It has to be a dipole. I. I I am just looking to use more magnets, always looking not. So there are no demonstrable. Well, let me put it this way: it has to have, it has to be in a magnetic field where it has been, where it's being charged by the field, not by direct contact. It has to be an induced field, a uh, non-permanent field kind of arrangement. It has no permanent charge yet. You can push it in and then pull it out and you know you end up with what you got um you have to break it while it's in the field which is the key ingredient and so yeah i think i answered the points well enough uh you know, um magnets do um they are they, they they do react to charge and charge reacts to them it's just that again the scope of the magnet is just that this stupid r cubed problem it just doesn't have the reach because of the dipole fact the dipole dilutes the the added distance effect at a distance it's got a huge disadvantage the magnet up close yeah it's powerful at a distance it's nothing all right so i'll read some of the comments on his video just because they're the same snarky crap so i should uh, say something about the snarky crap um 
until I pointed out, yes, I'll address these questions in the next live room, which is this room. Uh, there you go again. So this is this, this Toria. So he doesn't have any videos except these little baby cartoon videos. Um, trying, uh, talking to or about in Mendham, um, which is so ironic because this guy is apparently obsessed with me now, which is, just makes it kind of funny. Um, they guy is a, so they guy means the, can't get that right, is an ineffective, well, you're pretty ineffective at typing, um, ineffective relative to who? I mean, realistically, I mean, effective relative to who? Piro? Hofflade? So I'm less effective than Hofflade? Who am I ineffective to, relatively speaking? Who on the subjects I'm talking about is doing a much better job of talking about the my subjects than me? Now, I mean, sure, I could be more effective if I just told people what they wanted to hear. Oh, you're so cool. I love you guys. You're so fascinating. Everything you comment is so brilliant. Oh, I love you, love you, love you. I mean, yeah, well, does that make me effective? Effective as being what? A sellout? Jeez, what an asshole. Uneducated. I mean, it's just an insane statement on its face. I'm actually playing lecture videos in my videos. So he's calling me uneducated when I'm playing kind of the highest education, stuff people pay 30 grand a year to hear, to be educated by, and I'm playing it in my videos, and he's calling me uneducated. I mean, on his face, a, a silly remark. Ignorant, which makes absolutely no sense in the sense that, well, if I was so ignorant, then why can't you people make actual counter arguments instead of this ad hominem nonsense? Uh, and delusional. Yeah, so again, why, why can't you demonstrate it with a fact? Why can't you demonstrate by actually putting together a couple of rational sentences pointing out how I, oh, I must be wrong about this, or I must be wrong about that. How come you can't demonstrate it at all with a rational argument? How come you have to resort to this ad hominem crap and then spell words wrong? Uh, social parasite. Uh, again, relative to who? What have you accomplished in your life, cartoon man? Boy. Um, and the world at large doesn't give a rat's ass what he says or thinks. Well, again, they didn't give a rat's ass what uh, you know Einstein was thinking either when he was working in the patent office, did they? Martin Luther King wasn't important when he was, you know, preaching in his little church, was he? There's lots of people who have been irrelevant. You think you're the predictor. You know, you know, you're so fucking brilliant that you can't articulate a sentence of of rational argumentation, yet you know somehow. God, you're such a little weasel, a little fucking weasley coward. Put up or, or you know, bury your head in mud, you know, accept your humiliation. All right, even, uh, so even, even uh, uh, Kenneth Cardoda, Co well, anyway, it's the guy, you know, <laughs> you know, yellow bus guy. <clears throat> Something happened to him, okay? He's always been a little bit affected. Um, nice guy, though. Uh, it seems that you leave comments everywhere in relation to or about in Mendham. Yes, yeah, even he could be, even Kenneth can pick this up, you know, that this guy's the one who's obsessed. Um, uh, are you a, a fanatic of his that is so engaged with envy and despair? Yes, it, he's just obviously just can't stand that he has a an ugly, stupid, big pile of foreskin hanging off of his dick, and he just can't get over it. Um, no, I actually think Gare Bear, so who, this almost sounds like, God, this has got to be an in, incredibly gay person, or a girl. Who the hell says something like Gare Bear? Who, who does that? I mean, it's so freaking goddamn gay. Right, uh, is funny, right? And um, others' responses to his posts are funny. So then, why are you complaining? Hathaway's responding. He, you should be laughing, having a good time. So, why are you complaining? Uh, which is why I still follow his channel. So, again, you're the you were just pointing it out how, yes, you are the one obsessed. 
uh, but I want to spread the word. Okay, so what word are you spreading? Bullshit is what you're spreading, especially through potential anti-natalist, effless sycophants, right? So anybody who recognizes that, oh, yeah, life doesn't make much sense, that he shouldn't be taken seriously. Again, I shouldn't be taken seriously. What I say should be taken seriously. The argument should be taken seriously. And what is your demonstration of your valid argument here? Just a bunch of ad hominem attacks. Just a bunch of crap. He's at best a slacker clown. So again, more more stuff is just a, a absolute nonsense. I mean, slacker in the sense, oh yes, I'm only doing this, 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 and this, and this. And why don't you compare me to who? Compared to who am I a slacker, asshole? Who's who's really showing us how it should be done on the internet, asshole? Why don't you give me your recommendations, little cartoon boy? And at worst, an unsettling psychopath. And psychopath, why? Oh, because I think it sucks to torture things without their consent. Oh, what a fucking psychopath. I, I think you shouldn't be allowed to torture things without their consent. Oh, what a psychopath. That's just like Jeffrey Dahmer. No, you're probably the one who's just like. If Jeffrey had a channel, he'd probably be hiding behind little cartoons too. Pussy. And why are you following me so closely, by the way? Yeah, I don't see that really, <laughs> frankly. Um, uh, let's see. So Brace Yourself says, you aren't wrong, but add entertaining to the list. Yeah, well, fuck you too, weasel. Uh, and they'll be more accurate. So let's see who this douche is. Brace yourself. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so scared. It's so... Woo! Let's see. Geeks and Gamers deleted video. This is probably some really important controversy. <laughs> Ooh, he has an intro. Ooh, too cool. He's the Green Lantern. I really wasn't planning on this being a regular series, and I still hope that it doesn't turn out that way. Oh, dork. Oh, fuck this. Jump cuts and bullshit. Yeah, you can't even, <laughs> you can't do a straight up argument. You got to put cartoons in it. Oh, fuck. Let's see, his nose dive into complete egomaniacal delusion in terms of his physics theory is pretty fascinating. Yes, but you can't argue against it, can you? You can't make one reasonable counter argument demonstrating why, oh, it's obvious you can't be right. Oh, what's the evidence of that obvious fact? Why don't you give me the facts that make that impossible? So what's your facts? Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson says so. Is that it? You're just going to cite that the Pope says so? God is God. The Pope says so. But you can't make a rational argument, right? Because you don't know anything about the subject, do you, fuckface? Yeah, that's right, because you've been spending your life playing video games, you little loser. All right, the level of hypocrisy. No, you're the hypocrite, obviously. It's also awesome to behold. Douche. Uh, I'm not sure there's a person ultimately more unself-aware than Gary. Yeah, well, we'll find out in the end, won't we? And when I'm right, how, like, again, what is going to be your penance for, for being so fucking wrong? Will you make a video say, nobody ever listened to me forever because, man, I have no good judgment at all. I can't tell black from white. I'm so fucking stupid. I couldn't tell the truth from bullshit. So you just have to admit for the rest of your life, your opinion isn't worth a goddamn piece of shit. Because you'll demonstrate that you're so confident. Oh, you have to be a delusional, insane person to think Gary's right. Yeah, bullshit. Fucker, I'm going to shove those words so fucking far up your ass. He's super critical of everyone. Where is that shown up? Where is my super criticism? Where, fuckhead? I'm everything but himself. And again, how many times have I said it? I'm an asshole. You're an asshole. Everybody's an asshole. Dr. Pepper song. Duh, 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 duh. You're an asshole. We am an asshole. We're all assholes. Where have I said anything other than that fucking cunt? Oh, that's right. Nowhere, you lying piece of shit. Get what you deserve, liar. 
which is slandered by others. Douche. Um, anyway, brace yourself. I think he recognizes at least some of his flaws. <laughs> so, so the other douche is, like, oh, you're lie. You're going too far, douche. You know, you can only douche this much, douche. I mean, I'm a professional douche. I'll tell you how much you can douche. Oh God, these people are amazing. But to him, it's okay because he's always right. <sighs> now, what I am is honest. I have some fucking integrity. I don't just talk shit on the internet. If I'm going to say something shitty about somebody, I'm going to say it to their fucking face. I'm not going to be weasels like you talking this, doing this fucking crap talk on other people's videos. You fucking lame assholes. So I hope people do this to your goddamn mother. I hope they talk about what a skanky, fat ass, goddamn herpes covered whore she was. And I hope they do it somewhere where you can't do a damn thing about it, fucker. Because that's what you deserve. You little weasels, you gutless fucking cunts. Right. Enough of that. So I'll give you a couple of minutes if you got any comments, but I think I've done my job here. Uh, that was pretty much the agenda. Responding to Hothliday, kind of did that as best I you need to, right? So. The experiment is perfectly legitimate if you're using a round object. The math didn't have the test charge shape in it, so it wasn't math for in infinite plane opposed to infinite plane. It was math for test charge that has no dimensionality against infinite plane. <laughs> so clearly, there was no math proving me wrong here. So this whole implication that they got math, no, they don't got shit. So don't keep pretending they got this math that demonstrates it has to be this way because that's not how their math works their math is they see something happen and they describe it mathematically they don't predict anything oh people are just so stupid <laughs> you really are dumb fuckers So, uh, let's see. I don't think there's any other necessary points to make. I'll just move something else up here because that's not terribly interesting. Okay. Yeah, I already found some flaws. I've re re got to change this writing a bit. Fix it. So, but anyway. It's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So, people are just... Just keep clinging to your delusions. And in hindsight, you'll just look more and more pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Look how hard they fought against it. Why? Oh, that's right. Petty weasels. Petty, resentful weasels. Yeah, 30 second morning or so. You have anything to say, anybody? Knock, knock, who's there? Nobody? Nobody who? Nobody who isn't there? Ah, oh, more fucking irrelevant crap that I can't possibly even give a shit about. Brenda Hagenton is Ruben one out on Hollywood Boulevard. I don't even know what that means, so goodbye forever, because I just couldn't care less. <laughs> so, yes, more evidence of how great the human race is, and nobody should have these delusions about anti-natalism, because the uh, assholes who type mush in comment sections, sure, they should sure breed, for sure. Yeah, for sure. We need more liars and dumbasses in the world. Yeah, some more fakes and phonies. Oh, that'd be so cool. 
A whole planet covered with fakes and phonies and dumbasses. Ooh, how cool could that be? What kind of idiot would be against that? So, I guess we're done. So, till the next time, and such. So forth and whatnot.